In this video, we will discuss second derivatives and partial derivatives. We will also have a quick look at the chain rule. In a basic video about derivatives, we discussed how to find the derivative of this type of function by using the power rule. The derivative of this function is 2x minus 4. For example, if we like to know what the derivative is when x is equal to 1, we set x to 1 and do the math. We see that the derivative is equal to negative 2 when x is equal to 1. We can see this as we place a line that just touches the curve when x is equal to 1. The slope of this line is equal to negative 2. This type of line is called a tangent line. The derivative of the function when x is equal to 2 is 0 because the corresponding tangent line will have a slope of 0. The derivative when x is equal to 4 is equal to 4. We will now discuss how to find the second derivative of this function. The second derivative is simply the derivative of the derivative. To get the second derivative, we therefore differentiate this function, which is here just 2, because the derivative of 2x minus 4 is 2. Remember that the left-hand side is also sometimes denoted as f of x, and the derivative as f prime x. The second derivative is therefore sometimes called f double prime of x. We will now try to interpret the second derivative. If you set the left hand side to zero in this equation and solve for x, we can see that the derivative is equal to zero when x is equal to two, which is the point where the function has its minimum value. If the second derivative is positive, we know that the function has a local minimum at this point. If the second derivative would instead be negative, we know that the function has a local maximum at this point. Now, let's find the derivatives of this function. The derivative of this function is negative 4x plus 12, and the second derivative is equal to negative 4. If we set the left-hand side to 0 and solve for x, we know that the derivative is equal to 0 when x is equal to 3. If we set x to 3 in this equation and do the math, we see that y is equal to 4. We therefore know that the derivative of the function is equal to 0 when y is equal to 4. Since the second derivative is negative, we know that the function has a local maximum at this point. The function should therefore look something like this at this point. If you plot the function in this interval, it will look like this. Now, let's have a look at this function. These are its first and second derivatives. Let's try to interpret the second derivative in this case. We can see that the second derivative is negative if x is less than zero, because if you plug in a negative value here, the second derivative will be negative. The second derivative is equal to zero if x is equal to zero. Because if you plug in zero here, the second derivative will be equal to zero. The second derivative will be positive if x is greater than zero. The point at which the second derivative changes sign is called the inflection point. When the second derivative is positive, the tangent lines are below the curve and the graph is said to be concave up. Whereas if the second derivative is negative, the tangent lines are above the curve and the graph is said to be concave down. Since the second derivative is positive at this point, we know that the function has a local minimum here. And since the second derivative is negative at this point, we know that the function has a local maximum here. Now, let's have a look at the following function that, for example, could represent the growth 
of a certain population over time. The population starts with just a few individuals and increases to its maximum capacity, which is 1000 in this case. Note that the derivative is only positive because the slope of the curve is always positive. The derivative is close to zero in the beginning because the population grows slowly. The curve is steepest at time point 60, which means that the derivative is highest at this point. After this point, the growth of the population starts to slow down. If you place a tangent line to illustrate the derivative at this point on the curve, we see that it is below the curve. Then we place the next line, and so forth. At this point, the tangent lines start to get above the curve. From the start to time point 60, the derivative or the growth rate is increasing over time. The second derivative is therefore positive in this range. After time point 60, the growth rate starts to slow down, which results in a negative second derivative. This means that we have an inflection point at time point 60, where the second derivative is equal to zero. At this point, the curve has its maximum slope, which means that the population has its maximum growth rate. We can also think of the second derivative as acceleration. Suppose that we drive a car and increase the speed up to 100 miles per hour during the first 60 seconds. The second derivative would then be positive. At 60 seconds, we reach 100 miles per hour, which is the maximum speed. After 60 seconds, we start to slow down, which then results in that the second derivative becomes negative. We will now have a look at partial derivatives. Partial derivatives can be calculated if a function has several variables. Let's consider the following function, which has two variables, x and y. If you plot this function, we will obtain a surface in a three-dimensional space. Suppose that we like to calculate the slope at this point, where we only move along the x-axis. Then we can calculate the partial derivative with respect to x which means that we treat y as a constant. This means that we can think of y as an arbitrary number, for example 8, or 9, or any number that you want to plug in for y. By using the power rule, the derivative of this function is then x plus 2, because the derivatives of these constants are zero. Note that we use this symbol instead of d, where we calculate partial derivatives. Suppose that this point is located at an x-coordinate of 5. Then we plug in 5 in this equation and do the math. We then see that the slope along the x-axis of the surface at this point is 7. Similarly, the slope at this point along the y-axis can be obtained if we calculate the derivative of this function with respect to y. We then only need to focus on the terms that include a y. The derivative of this function with respect to y is therefore 2y plus 1. This function can be used to calculate the slope of the surface along the y-axis at a certain value of y. If you set the left-hand sides to zero and solve the equations for x and y, we can see that the function has its minimum value when x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to negative 0.5. Let's take another example. The derivative with respect to x is x plus 2y plus y to the power of 2. The derivative of the function with respect to y is 2x plus 2x times y plus 1. The second derivative of the function with respect to x is 1, 
because the derivative of this function with respect to x is 1. Sometimes we use this type of notation, which means that we first differentiate the function with respect to x, and then differentiate the derivative with respect to y. This is the derivative of the original function with respect to x, and the derivative of this function with respect to y is 2 plus 2y. Finally, we'll just have a quick look at how to find the derivative of a composite function like this one. Let's rewrite this function like this, and expand the double brackets, where every term in the first bracket is multiplied by every term in the second bracket like this. Then we simplify. Next we find the derivative of this function, which is 8x plus 12. The derivative of this composite function is therefore 8x plus 12. Suppose that we would have a 5 in the exponent, then it would be quite complicated to find the derivative of such a function, but if you use the chain rule it will be easy. We'll now have a look at how to use the chain rule to find the derivative of the same function. The derivative of a function using the chain rule is the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of the outer function is 2 times 2x plus 3. Because we bring down the 2 here and reduce the exponent by 1 when we differentiate the outer function. Then we find the derivative of the inner function, which is 2, because the derivative of 2x plus 3 is 2. Then we simplify and note that this is exactly the same as what we got previously. This was the end of the second lecture about derivatives. Thanks for watching!